Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. It's that time. Early morning crypto talk. We'll be getting started in just a second. That's right, it's Friday. You guys excited about that? The Thank God It's Friday crew. I'm all about making every day a Friday. Or every day a Saturday. Friday means you still gotta go to work. You just have something to look forward to at the end of the day. (laughs) How about not having to go to work at all? You work for yourself, you create your own time, you create your own freedom. There's only one drawback for working for yourself. And that is you don't work five days a week, you actually work seven days a week. But you also get paid seven days a week. We're going to get started very shortly. What's going on, Erica, Gerald, Bayana, Mr. Cobb, Abigail, Joan. Joan says she can't hear anything. If you guys can hear me clearly, give me some uh, thumbs up, hearts, some likes. Want to make sure that I can come through. I'm coming through. What's going on, Jeremy? Mike? Awesome, awesome. We're going to be talking about the banks this morning. A couple of articles all came out about some banks. Good morning, Benita. You got Mr. Boggs trying to call me right now. Right when I'm doing a Facebook Live. Let me send him a message. <laughs> that always happens. How you doing, Nicole? All right, let's get this set up. Anything major happening in Bitcoin world lately? You know, let's look at the chart. I have not looked at uh, CoinMarketCap this morning. Let's see what the news says. Yeah, Mr. Boggs, I'll give you a call as soon as this is over. So let's look at the CoinMarketCap. All right, we've got Bitcoin still hovering at that $11,100 mark. Ethereum is at 1,000. Uh, Ripple is down 5%. Stellar is up 2%. EOS is up 1%. So the markets are kind of flat. Till you get to number 21, Ray Blocks, that's up 21%. And Populous, that's up 10%. Let's see here. Yeah, you've got BitShares up 10%. The only real one that's taken a negative hit at negative 9% is Ardor. But it seems to be kind of flat right now. Not that much movement. Let's talk about the banks. The first bank is in Nordia. Nordia Bank forbids its employees from owning Bitcoin. I didn't know a bank had that power. Did you know that a bank can forbid you (laughs) from owning something? I forbid you from owning the Tesla. (laughs) 
Someone sending me an article about 50 Cent. Yeah, I covered that yesterday. I covered yesterday. Doing a live right now. Yeah, 50 Cent came up. He offered one of his albums as payment in Bitcoin that was worth $400,000. And today, that's worth over $7 million. Oh, you're right. You're right, Pierre. You, you, you're getting on me on that. Let me, let me make sure I start this off by stating I am not a licensed financial advisor to be giving financial advice. I read the news articles of the day. I share my opinion and suggestions. Now, you take that information, do your own research, and your own determination for what you want to do for yourself. All right, your own investigations. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about Nordia. Nordia Bank forbids its employees from owning Bitcoin. Nordia Bank, one of the most reputed financial institution institute in Northern Europe, has banned all its 31,000 employees from owning Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. I think I reported on this last week, or if it was a different bank. The giant North, Northern European bank did not stop there and is also restricting its employees from learning about the crypto space? Are you kidding me? I, wait, 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 wait. You're, you're forbidding them from owning Bitcoin, but you're now going to restrict them from even learning about it? How's that possible? The new policy was enacted due to the unregulated nature of the crypto market. I, I wish somebody in the United States tried to pull that. The newly imposed policy has forbidden its employees from owning cryptocurrencies due to its near speculative nature thus making it a risky investment. Yet, yet states and countries have the lottery. You know what your odds are winning the lottery? You have a better chance of getting bit on the ass by a great white shark seven times before you ever win the lottery. Yet they call, they're calling this too risky? <laughs> oh, they're funny. It says the Nordic Bank stated, given these high risks, you know, that's, that's like, you might as well state, we forbid you from going to the beach. Because it's highly risky that if you go down that water, a shark's going to come and bite your leg off. So because of that risk, we forbid our employees from visiting the beach. Why not say, we forbid our employees from driving in cars? Because the amount of car accidents and deaths that happen every single year, it's too risky. You know, the insurance companies are losing a whole lot of money, so we forbid you from driving. Nordia spokeswoman informed Reuters that the new legislation will come into effect starting February 28th, and they're going public with this as if they're proud about it? She also added that the bank would not influence or force any employees, those who already own it, to sell their crypto holdings. In an email to Reuters, she wrote, The risks are seen as too high and the protection is insufficient for both the co-workers and the bank. Okay, that's like saying, you know what? We forbid you from getting on an airplane because the, the risk is too high. Y'all remember 9-11? And uh, the airplane does not provide uh, parachutes for all of the, the people on the plane so that if there's something goes wrong with the plane, people can jump out and have a safe parachute. You know, their safety is not guaranteed. Therefore, it's too risky to fly a plane. Therefore, we're banning all flight travel. That's what they're trying to say here. We're going to ban you from owning and interacting with crypto. And we're going to ban you from even learning about it. That goes back to the slavery days where not only are we going to ban slaves from reading, we're going to ban you from having the ability to learn how to read. What does that sound like? What are they afraid of? Because in the slavery times, the slave owners did not want their slaves learning how to read and write because that empowered them. That meant that they're learning knowledge that they don't know, they no longer need the slave owners. 
So if a bank is telling their employees, nah, we don't want you owning no Bitcoin. We don't even want you learning about it. Why? Because their employees may learn something that they no longer need their slave owners. I mean, their employers anymore. In the past, Nordia Bank officials have publicly criticized Bitcoin. In December 2017, Nordia Bank President and CEO Casper von Koskel explained, If you somehow allow that to live without controls, then given the billions we spend on financial regulation as a financial system, I mean, I think it's actually a joke that you then just let something like Bitcoin live. I don't get it. It's absurd. Man, don't be a hater, man. Don't be hating because you have to, you spent billions on financial regulation and then another entity comes in. It doesn't have to do all that stuff. Don't be mad. Join the game. <laughs> Sweden's financial regulator has also backed the new legislation passed by the bank. You know, I'm surprised this is coming out of Sweden and Northern Europe, actually. I'm surprised by that. I could see this coming from like a communist type nation. Says Peter, a spokesman of the Financial Supervisor Authority, told Bloomberg, every institution must decide on the details of their internal regulations, specifying the rules for their employment. Sorry, somebody's trying to blow me up, calling me up. So they says, if banks like Nordia are going to have a very specific policy on this, and we're hearing regulators are taking a look at this, including the ECB and central banks, probably it will be that it's changing. With developments like this, it's more likely that it will have to be discussed in the context of the European Banking Federation. Many crypto proponents took to social media by calling the Nordia's move unethical. Yeah, that's true. Jeremy says, who wrote this article? A guy named Akshay Makadia. Let me put the link to this in the uh, chat box again for those that's just joining us. Uh, come on, computer, don't move all slow on me now. And how you doing, Mary? Welcome, welcome. All right, let's give this a second. So again, I hope you guys are having a good day so far this Friday. You know, I say, thank God it's Friday. I say every day should be a Saturday. Now, what's interesting is the next article I'm going to read is going to have the opposite just based on the title. But all right, there's a link to this Nordia article. I'm almost finished. So let's see. Crypto proponents took the social media, bashing them. The trade unions employees, they also will investigate the ban. Chairman of the Finance Federation said, we are in principle boundary for what an employer can intervene, and we will, of course, investigate further. Said it is a widespread practice across the banking industry to restrict the personal account dealing of staff to prevent them taking positions and speculative investments or which might expose them to a risk of financial loss and therefore impact their financial standing. Nordia, therefore, like all banks, has the right to set out policies in this area that apply to its staff. Now, I actually can understand that. I understand what, what their position on that is. Just like, you know, if you are working for the police or, or um, uh, what is the name of those armored trucks that transport money between, you know, grocery stores and banks and stuff. And they do a background check on you. And you've got to be in good financial standing because they understand that if something happened and you're stressed for money and you're around money all doggone day, then that can influence your job, whether you're going to steal or use your authority to take advantage of something. So I understand their point but i think they're reaching far reaching overreaching when it comes to crypto so interestingly another cryptocurrency proponent christopher de gear wrote on medium that banning employees from owning cryptocurrencies and adopting the technology could only harm 
the Nordea Bank over a long run. Daguerre explained that banks have ruled the financial market as they wished for years, but with Bitcoin now in the picture, these financial institutions are worried they could be, they could be run out of business. Also, he mentioned that to adopt the revolutionary blockchain technology, one must use cryptocurrencies, which Nordea employees won't be able to. To end the medium, the author says, Nordea will be the last bank in Finland to understand that the world is changing. Yeah, I like that one. And here's another bank news coming out of Japan. And this one says, Bank of Japan, no big problems with Bitcoin so far. Oh, they're taking a different take on this. Let me put the link in the chat box. So Japan don't see a problem. It's not the sexiest headline in the world. But so far, things with Bitcoin seem to be going relatively well in Japan. According to a Bank of Japan director general, with increasing calls from world leaders to unite and devise a global regulatory regime for cryptocurrencies, Japan has taken a strikingly different approach. Bank of Japan Director General of Payment and Settlements Hiromi Yamaoka explained there is undoubtedly growing interest among global policymakers on how to deal with cryptocurrencies. Japan's approach would be to think about how to curb excesses without discouraging innovation, Mr. Yamaoka told Reuters. Indeed, the near 7,000 island nation has been a definitive point of success for cryptocurrencies, and especially Bitcoin, which are recognized as legal in the country. The third largest world economy is a fine experiment in a sea of countries which still struggle as to what to make of decentralized currencies. Ironically, Bitcoin's price rise has only hastened concern among regulators. Pretty much weekly, if not daily, there are calls from one corner or another of the globe to severely restrict, if not outright ban, digital assets. For Japan, the watchword seems to be caution, but erring on the side of allowing these new forms of money to first flourish. And Japan is doing this in an increasing air of fellow first world countries looking for global regulation. They say so far so good. The director general continued, it's uncertain whether global cooperation would mean global regulation. It may mean sharing a common view on the risk involved in the cryptocurrency trading and seeking to send out a common message. Global harmonization may not necessarily mean global regulation, he noted. Japan is already a crypto leader. But with China effectively ending their domestic party, the land of the rising sun could see an even greater boost in the months and years to come. Even, you know, they're going to take uh, more business out of South Korea. South Korea keeps acting crazy. The country has been battling the ghost of a backbreaking recession, one that not so long ago took over a decade to work its way through their economy. Analysts get the sense that innovative technologies are not something Japan can afford to ban. Huh. That sentence right there. Don't you think United States should take that same t stance? You're right, Erica, they should. They should follow the trend and not try to fight it. I mean, I'm going to read that sentence again. I lost my place. Let me go back. Let's see. Work their way through. Analysts get the sense that innovative technologies are not something Japan can afford to ban, much less entangle in an excessive global regulations. There is also the fact that Japan has relatively long experience with the likes of Bitcoin and power through its greatest scandal, Mt. Gox, without overreacting. Maybe it's better they continue to be the outlier, the canary in the crypto mine shaft. What's more, so far I don't think there are any big problems Mr. Yamaoka stressed, but we need to look carefully. If the exposures turn out to be huge, we may need to follow up and work to maintain financial stability together with the Financial Services Agency. For now, he suggested cryptocurrencies pose little threat, as Bitcoin isn't used in many transactions relative to the overall economy. 
They're not being a disruptive payment or settlement force for now. Has allowed Japanese regulators to take a wait and see approach. Wow, how innovative. A wait and see approach. That ain't happened in the United States. Oh no. <laughs> Speaking of the United States, let's talk about Bank of America. That seems to be very dichotomous when it comes to Bitcoin. It's like the left hand ain't talking to the right hand. Or they're doing two different things. So let's see what this article has to say. CEO reveals Bank of America has many blockchain patents. The vast majority of Wall Street affiliated institutions have been larger promoters of the technology behind cryptocurrency. Blockchain without Bitcoin is now the new mantra. Bank of America remains skeptical. However, November 2017 changed a few minds as temptation rose dramatically on the back of Bitcoin's growth. Other cryptocurrencies including Ripple, Litecoin, and Ethereum were also incurring quick gains and volumes seldom seen for daily traded stocks on Wall Street. Big hitters like CBOE, CME, and the NASDAQ surged towards the industry, and the rhetoric was broken. No more aversion to cryptocurrencies, it seemed. Brian Moynihan, the CEO of Bank of America, turned immediately to the topic of blockchain technology when asked for his sentiment on Bitcoin while attending the World Economic Forum gathering in Davos, Switzerland. The chief executive told Yahoo Finance that B of A quite likely has more patents than any other competitor involved with blockchain technology. Yeah, they got 21 of them. We believe in the idea of distributed ledgers and smart contracts and all the words you hear about that. We are developing stuff, but it's not new concepts. You know, that sentence right there lets me know. Either Brian has real no no clear understanding of the space or he knows it better than everybody why is he being so vague here why do i why do i come to that assumption let's go over what he just said we believe in the idea of distributed ledgers okay he understands that smart contracts he understands that then he says and all the words you hear about that he's like yeah and all that other stuff yeah, all that, all that other, you know, nerd talk. Then he says, we are developing stuff. What, what does that mean? What, what, what stuff are you developing? But it's not new concepts. So either, you know, he doesn't want to give, show his card, show his hand to his competitors, or he doesn't even know what's going on. He just said, hey, y'all, you know, y'all that work for me, get into this crypto stuff. We got to make sure we can be on top of this. Who knows? Well, Moynihan, Moynihan, went on to reveal B of A's view of blockchain and its potential applications. The registry of motor vehicles is a distributed ledger, he said. We know who owns a car. We know who owns a house. The idea is that you can do it more electronically and can do it across borders. Okay, he understands that. That's right, Jeremy. I, I know stuff. <laughs> I, know some, I know this stuff. What stuff do you know? I just know stuff. You don't worry about it. Take my word for it. I know stuff. Donald Trump says that all the time, too. For Moynihan, the issue of cryptocurrency is wholly separate to blockchain technology. That's Now, that's a current statement there. It's true and not true. See, the banks love the blockchain, the te te technology behind it. As long as it is centralized. See, Bitcoin and its representative blockchain technology is decentralized. The banks don't like that. Bitcoin being decentralized in blockchain means it is a reward given to those miners who are creating the decentralized blockchain. However, the centralized version the banks like means that 
Sorry, give me one second. I got somebody blowing me up right now, and he's going to keep interrupting me. I am doing a face Facebook Live right now. All right, so let's continue. Okay, like I said, the banks love the blockchain technology. If it's centralized, that they control it, there is no reward given out for building the blockchain, meaning the miners, because they will be pre-mined. They control it. This is why education is so important. So when you read stuff like this, you know, you know what they mean. So, no, he's not saying he likes Bitcoin. He's saying he loves the technology behind it. So, uh, let's see here. It says, a search at the patent office reveals that B of A does indeed boast. Oh, this went up. Last time I knew it was 21. Now, 48 patents and applications that are blockchain related. 48. That's more than double what it was last time I heard about this, which was last around August. Google's patent database also shows that B of A owns 39 patents containing the word cryptocurrency, 36 that contain the word Bitcoin, and 27 that employ the term blockchain in the registration documents. What do they have planned for all of us? What do they have planned? Published information reveals that their most recent blockchain-inspired patent centers on a blockchain alias with the purpose of facilitating intrapersonal payments. While it does seem that B of A leads the pack with a number of patents, they are by no means alone in their fraternity. In the world of banking, being able to enable transactions via blockchain represents massive savings if a bank can get it right. Two representatives of the St. Louis Federal Reserve Bank published a paper on this concept with the following statement. In addition, Wells Fargo has received patented protection for an application stemming from June 2017. Published very recently, the patent centers on a blockchain platform for global trade finance. The patent papers describe generating a blockchain-based letter of credit relating to a contract for a trade transaction between a seller and a buyer. In 2016, Yahoo Finance reported that banks were scurrying to fill open positions for blockchain engineers. That is a that's another source of future income for people, a, a new industry. Like, you know, remember the, 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 te the tech generation, the dot-com era? All those nerds moved up to Silicon Valley. Here's a new industry now, blockchain engineers. The exact depth of the sector's interest and rollout remains to be seen, but numerous pilots have been lanced and it seems inevitable that the technology will change banking forever. While everyone may think of Ripple as a suitable alternative, their less visible but more persistent income stream seems to be developing blockchain technology exclusively for banks. Chain is another outfit blurring the lines between crypto and traditional banking. Outside of finance, Walmart has employed blockchain tech to track perishable shipments, and IBM has applied the tech within their business protocols. Moynihan was less enthusiastic about the current volatile trading and the speculative side of cryptocurrencies, saying, We can't get in the middle of this. We don't trade it. We don't have anything to do with it, because that's really up to people to make that decision. We're not going to participate in it. While he was referring to Bitcoin, he adamantly omitted using the name throughout the interview. That said, it seems Bank of America is keeping their options open on participating just in case. And that's not true because they have already gotten in the middle of this. Number one, they're cooperating with, with uh, the IRS and Coinbase to find out who owns cryptocurrency accounts. The second thing that they're doing is that they change their rules and, and stipulations regarding anybody that has a business account with Bank of America. And if you purchased any Bitcoin with your business account, you're going to be getting a letter or your account will be frozen until you fill out a God knows how amount, many pages of paperwork. They want to know everything. 
And then they also announced last month that they're looking to create their own form of an exchange where people could drop their cryptocurrencies in and exchange it into fiat controlled by Bank of America. So that's all public knowledge. And then he comes out and says, oh, no, yeah, we don't, we don't want to get in the middle of that. We don't want to have nothing to do with it. Yet you own 48 patents. <laughs> don't listen to what I say. Watch what I do. So that's the news and information on the banking industry. And the reason why we cover it is because it affects all of us. What happens is that one bank could set a precedent for others. So it's very important that you are plugged in and you know what's going on. I was reminded of why we are coming out with our own education platform earlier today. And I'm going to read. I got a message from, I'm not going to say his name, because he might be listening. And I don't want to you know, call him out. feel like he thinks he's being embarrassed. But let me pull up this chat that he sent me. And this is exactly why we are focusing on education. He said, hi, Brandon. What's all about this crypto, Bitcoin, etc.? I am so, so confused. Is it money that we invest for it to yield in the future? How much money does one need to invest? Please educate me. This is one individual. Can you imagine 5,000 sending me the same message every week, wanting me to hold your hand, wanting me to be your personal teacher? Educate me. That's what he said. There was nothing in here about, you know, I know your time might be valuable. I know, you know, <laughs> this is a lot of information. Maybe I'm willing to pay you. No, no, no. Just start asking me questions and please educate me. I have no problem with people seeking out information and knowledge. Because we all had a starting point in Bitcoin. And that starting point could be very, you know, nervous at the time. Very uh, uh, scared. You're afraid. It's a new technology. It's something brand new that you got to step into. We all had our first day. And that's what our education platform is going to address. It's going to address your first day in Bitcoin. Where somebody might say, Oh, I could just go on YouTube and Google information. But go back to your first day. How overwhelming could that be? Where you type in Google, what is Bitcoin? And 5 million links and articles and YouTube videos pop up. And you don't know where to go, where to begin, where to start, or even who you should listen to. So it's better if we have a structured system in place that can take you through step A through Z. That when you finish the program, you know you learned something. It wasn't overwhelming. It held your hand. And you're learning a new skill set where you're going to be earning while you're learning. And you want to know what the best part is at the end of the day? Especially for those of us in the United States. Because with this technology being brand new and the laws being rewritten all every day, 100% SEC compliant. Meaning you can go to bed at night and wake up in the morning and know that it's still there. That is what we've been working on for a while now. And we are only, I don't know, maybe 45 days or so away before we start saying anything public. But we are generating a list. For those of you who want to be the early birds, we are generating a list. Now, because I know that there's many people who listen to me that have never been in any of my organizations in the past, that you might be a part of many other companies, you have an upline, I don't care about stealing anybody's downline, raiding another company, taking your hard-earned work to build an organization 
for my own benefit. That's why you never see me point, give out links publicly, and I never will. So here's what you do if you want to be one of the early birds. Go back to who, whatever organization you are a part of, whoever your upline or sponsor is, and I don't care what company it is, and find out if they are going to be involved first. Because that's who you're working with. You spent a lot of time and energy to build a team. We want you to keep your team. When was the last time you ever heard that from a new company that's getting started? I don't need your downline. So you go through them first. And the list that I'm generating, that's not necessarily meaning those people are signing up with me. Because I'm going to be sending out a video when the time is right with further instructions. I'm going to say the same thing. Go back to the people you're currently working with. This is a See, the one thing about crypto is that it's not about a company. It's not about an individual. It's about the community. We are all in this together. We want you to succeed. How, how, does, that, how does that help you succeed if... Your people are jumping ship and just go with somebody else. We want you to succeed because there's enough room and enough money for everybody. There is no scarce mentality here. There's far more money in the crypto space than there is in the MLM space. Enough to go around. There's no need to be greedy. Now, I'm not that person. I'm not a hype guy. Now... That doesn't necessarily mean you're forced to. If you've got beef or you don't like for whatever reason who your current upline is, I mean, you're not forced to have to go with them, but at least give them the courtesy and the respect to say, hey, I want to join this one, but I want to go in a different direction. You know, be a professional. It's nothing personal. That's your prerogative. But we're going to do things the right way. We're going to be ethical moral so with that thank you guys for joining us i will probably be doing late night crypto talk tonight i got an article that I, you know i love doing these ones bitcoin meets brothels at nevada nevada's bunny ranch the bunny ranch ain't that where lamar odom was was it the bunny ranch he was at that he you know lost his dog on mind uh, or was there an hbo special about the bunny ranch <laughs> now accepting bitcoin i'm telling you the, the women love Bitcoin. <laughs> Bitcoin is, if, if brothels are accepting Bitcoin, then I got, here, here, let me say this. <laughs> if you ever want to know if Bitcoin is real money, the moment you see brothels and prostitutes accepting Bitcoin, you better believe it's real money. Try to pay, try to pay a, a, a prostitute in Hey, I've got Monopoly money. I got Chuck E. Cheese money. No, 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 no. You better be coming with the cash. And if, if and if the prostitutes are accepting Bitcoin, yeah, that's real money right there. <laughs> so tonight, that will be one of the topics. Bitcoin meets brothels at Nevada's Bunny Ranch. We'll say that for late night crypto talk. It's just for those of you who can't handle that information. Oh yeah, that goes with the bar conversation. Yeah, I'll, I'll go over that again tonight too. How to have a bar conversation and get any girl in, in the bar that you want. How to set yourself aside from everybody else. That's right, booty be loving Bitcoin. What was that other one we talked about? What was it, the porn industry? S- n- Naka, uh, Satoshi Naka booty or something? <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough of that. It's too early for that. That's going to be late night crypto talk tonight. We're going to have some fun tonight. I got to I got to pick the right music too. <laughs> All right, you guys, have a great day. I've got a lot of work to do today and this weekend. I'm going to have to go off off the grid a bit so that I can focus. You know, imagine You're trying to do videos and stuff, and every five minutes, somebody's shooting you a message or calling you. It's just not possible. It's like now, i got to wait till maybe 1 or 2 a.m. in the morning to to do some stuff. 
But anyways, I'm not complaining. I love it. I love this industry. I'm enjoying the journey, and I'm loving to seeing other people win. Because the more people you help, the more money you make yourself. With that, God bless. Have a great day. Bitcoin Brandon out. Bye-bye.